Praise the Lord, beloved. On behalf of Apostle Dwayne Broussard and our MOGFC family, we want to thank you for inviting us into your home. I know this message will be a blessing, so call a friend, a neighbor, or get a group and get ready to receive a fresh word from the Lord that will be life-changing. Remember, Jesus loves you, and so do we here at Mystery of God's Fellowship Church. Now, here is Apostle D with the message. Truly step back that you may step up. I pray that I decrease, that thy spirit may increase, that they neither see me nor hear me today, but thy word and thy word alone be established, that we may lay it on the table of our heart to incorporate it into our lifestyle that all of us become living epistles yes, to be read by all men, women, and children. Holy Ghost, Holy show us the master. Holy. Show us revelation. Jesus, we give you preeminence in this place. Whatever you want to do is all right with us today. We take our hands off. My prayer today is that you give us ears to hear and a heart to receive your word. Don't let none of us leave here the way we came on. Lord Jesus, we decree and declare that you are the Lord of the harvest, the Lord of the righteous. You are the Lord of the Sabbath. It is an honor to serve you. Lord, your word declares, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Lord Jesus, it's an honor to praise you this morning. It's an honor to come before your throne and say thank you. What a privilege and an honor. Now, Lord, I pray you anoint me to complete this assignment. I give you complete authority to take over my tongue, my words, my action, every edifice of my body. Whatever you want to do is all right with me. Show up and show out, God. I pray for prophetic unction and divine healing today as we give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor in Jesus Christ's name. Let everyone in the dream and say amen. said, I will not share my glory with another. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on with me to the book of the prophet Isaiah chapter 5. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 5. My God, we have a prophetic word. You better call somebody. You better take somebody. We have a prophetic word for what's going on. It's hard to see God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the middle of a storm. How many know that? Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, you know, if you're under the water, you don't know if you're up or down. You understand? Until you see which way the bubbles are going. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 5. When you're there, say amen. 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 Starting at verse 8. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Isaiah chapter 5, starting at verse 8, the King James Version reads this way. Woe to them that join house to house, that lay field to field, till there be no place, that they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. Mm. My God. The Bible says that by God shall be hid, it be hid to them that are lost, that they be placed alone in the midst of the earth. In my ears, said the Lord of hosts, of a truth, many houses shall be desolate, even great and fair without inhabitant. Yea, ten acres of vineyard shall yield one bath, and the seed of a homer shall yield an epoch. Woe, woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink that continue until night to wine and flame them. And the harp and the viol and the tabaret and the pipe. Oh, that that word pipe. Now, we know some of us had our natural pipes bust, but did you come here to let God break your spiritual pipes? Will you give God some praise this morning? Yeah. Yeah. You ever heard somebody say, that brother, no, he got some pipes on him. Amen. You can't tell God when you're going to praise him or when you're not. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And wine. I'm on verse 12. Mm-hmm. Are in their feasts, but they regard not the works of the Lord, neither consider the operation of his hands. Uh-huh. Therefore, my people gone, are gone into what? Captivity. Captivity. 
because they have no knowledge. Come on you mean I didn't go into captivity because of sin? I didn't go into captivity because of that. I went into captivity because of my ignorance? Is there anybody ready to break the spirit of ignorance this morning? Hallelujah. He said, my people, I know everybody know where the other verse in Hosea, chapter 4, uh, verse uh, 6, he, he talks about my people perish for life. We're going to get there, but this is the prophet Isaiah saying, my people have gone into captivity because they have no knowledge, and their honorable men are famished, and their multitude dried up with thirst, with thirst. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me this living water that I want. There is no more. Therefore, verse 14, Therefore hell has enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure and their glory and their multitude and their pompings and he that rejoices shall descend into it. And the mean man shall be brought down and the mighty man shall be humbled and the eyes of the lofty shall be humbled. But the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment. He shall be exalted where? In judgment. in judgment. Come on, look at somebody and say, let God have his way. Let God you can't have tell his God way. what to do or not do. Amen. God will be exalted in his judgment. Amen. I wonder if God's judgment has come on the earth. Come on, Pop. He will be exalted <clears throat> in his judgment. That's what the Bible says in verse 16. And, and God that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness. Then shall the lame feed after their manner. And the waste places of the fat ones shall strangers eat. Woe unto them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity. And sin as it were a cart rope. That say let him make speed and hasten his work. That we may see it. And let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw nigh and come, that we may know it. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, on, that put bitter for sweet yeah, yeah, and yeah, sweet yeah, for yeah, bitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, look at somebody and say, we got this thing twisted. We got, we got, got this thing, thing twisted. Woe unto them that are wise in their own sight or their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of, of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Therefore, as the fowl devoureth the stubble and the flame consumeth the shaft, so their root shall be as rottenness and their blossoms shall go up as dust. Because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Amen. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, before you be seated, look at somebody and say, you're blessed. You're, you're blessed. blessed. Not because I say so. Not because, because I say because so. Because the word of God says so. Because the word of God says so. Come on, come on, come on. Look at somebody and say, you know God. You know God. Is still in control. It's still in control. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. Come on. Hallelujah. Man, we trying to th think it's uh, the Democrats or the Republicans or this or that. None of it. None of it. It's all about the cross of Calvary. It's about the work of the cross. Yeah, Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about God's word. Come on, look at somebody and say it's about God's word. It's about it's about God's, God's word. word. Come on, look at our brother and sister and say, by faith. By faith. I'm going to get this word. I'm going to get this word. Come on, you may be seated in the house of the Lord if you can. Amen. Whoo, where does one begin? I say, where does one begin? Come on, Pastor. Children of Zion, the bugler, has boggled the boundaries of God's blessings mm -hmm. with bombastic breaches, Amen. brazened and emboldened with buffoonery, promoting hype over holiness, leaving the believer having more gourmet gestures and satirical sentiment. Amen. Rather than operating in God's glory and in divine substance. Mm. In other words, 
You know what gourmet is, right? Just spruce it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Somebody say, make it plant. Make it Let plant. me spruce it up. God bless you. We're praying for you. God, oh, God loves you. You know, oh, look at God's work. Mm -hmm. We have gourmet gestures. We know when to go and when not to go. We know what to say, when to smile, when not to smile. We, ooh, we got this thing on, 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 on steroids. In mm. satirical sentiments. Our prayers go out to you. Let us ring the bell. A moment of silence. We got satirical sentiments without operating in God's glory. And under divine substance. Mm. Where is it at, Holy Ghost? Yes, thank you. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. The Bible declares in the longest chapter in the Bible, Psalms 119, verse 89, the Bible says, Forever, O Lord, Thy word is settled in heaven. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. Hallelujah. When you pray, how many know you should be praying, I command heaven and earth to record this day. My son is blessed. My children are blessed. You know you can make heaven and earth come in agreement with your prayer? Mm. Psalms 119, verse 89 says, Forever, O Lord, Thy word is settled in heaven. You have heard me say many times before, the Bible is the oak of God planted in the garden of eternity, hmm. which is the bedrock of our faith and hope, guiding us out of darkness and bringing us into his marvelous light. Let me put you in remembrance again of Psalms chapter 119, but this time, verse 105. I know y'all know this one. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Amen. Let me summarize. In other words, with all that I just said, all that bombastic and brazen, and, let me just summarize it, please. If you can't find or they don't show you how they value God's standard, you don't have to follow their shout. Okay, come on. You shall know a prophet if it shall come to pass. Amen. 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 Oh, God showed me the previous administration. He gonna win the election. Mm. Did he win? No. Nope. Then why are you still following him? Why are you still believing a prophet lying preacher? Come on. Can I be real this morning? Come on, God. If they can't show you the value that they follow God's standard, you don't have to follow that. Oh, there's a lot of people that can shout, can't they? Amen. Ooh, there's a whole lot of people that know how to feed you and bleed you. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got a whole lot of preachers want to tell you what they're doing in Africa, but can't tell you what they're doing down the street. Mm -hmm. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. I know you gave to the mission work. But how many know we got some brothers that need mission work with their busted pipes this week? Yep. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 That need a hot meal this week. That's right. Please hear me. My co-laborers in the faith works without work. Works without faith is dead. Yes, Lord. Our faith with our works is dead. Okay, mm -hmm. how much you pray and you're not putting no works behind you. Your prayer is dead. I'm praying I get a job and you don't put out no resumes? I'm praying I pass this test and you're not studying? Come on. I'm praying God bless my marriage and you're not trying to work on your marriage? Works are dead without faith. Please hear me, men and women of God. Our works must not be defined by the level of our feel-good conversation about God. 
You got a whole bunch of people talking God, yes or no? Amen. Oh, God bless me with this job. Oh, God bless me with this car. Oh, you know, God told me this. Oh, God. Listen, our works should not be defined by the level of our feel-good conversation where there is no evidence of a convicting change from God and through God. You still talking about God, but you ain't changed. Come on. Am I talking to anybody? Amen. You got a whole bunch of people talking about God and nobody's changing. Amen. Come on, Brother Chris, 2 so Corinthians 5, 17. If any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creature. All old thing. There got to be a change. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. What am I trying to say? You better hear me this morning. You better hear me. Every itchy ear needs to be scratched. Mm -hmm. Every itchy ear. You better tell them something they want to hear. Mm -hmm. Or they ain't coming back. Mm -hmm. Every itchy ear needs to be scratched. And every wearied flesh needs to be tickled. Should I go to church today? He better make me feel good for coming in. I didn't have to come. Every weary flesh needs to be tickled. Hallelujah. But a hungry and thirsty soul needs to be fueled and filled on faith. Hallelujah. Hmm. Quenched with the living waters of truth. I know you know that's found in the Beatitudes, right? Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst at the righteousness, for they shall be filled. Somebody need to shout right about now. Yeah. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me up. I'm not leaving here till I'm, I'm full of fuel and filled. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 I came thirsty, but I'm going to leave quenched today. Hallelujah. Yeah. I came on empty, but I came to fill up my faith tank today. We got feel good conversations about God with no convicting change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Said your heart didn't convict you? Come on now. You can't talk to anybody just any kind of way. Right. There's no convicting change. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, many women yeah. of God, please hear me, brothers and sisters. The correcting fires of God's judgment must not be taken lightly, Amen. nor dismissed as uh, negative vibes. I don't want to be around anybody negative. You got spinach in your teeth. That's not negative. Right. Amen. That shirt too tight for you. The buttons are screaming. Yeah. Oh, you too negative. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. Nobody want to hear the truth. Or oh, it's called a negative vibe. Yeah. Or oh, it's called what? Bad karma. I'm going to ask you, how have the mighty fallen? How has the fruitful plains become barren? Come on. God bless America. Hmm. Purple mountain majesty upon the what? The fruited plains. How has the fruited plains become barren? How are Houston supposed to be the energy capital of America? And we don't have no power. No power. I told somebody the other day, the power is still on. Sadly, I lit my candles. I made a covenant candle with God. Glory. Hallelujah. Are you with me this morning? Amen. Is the mighty fallen? How has the fruitful field become barren? It is not because of an unbalanced greenhouse. Oh, stop using aerosol spray. Oh, oh, you're catching too many fish. <laughs> Anybody understand what I'm saying? Amen. Save a whale but kill a baby? It is not because of the greenhouse. Amen. Nor is it about a amoral White House. Mm. Come on. 
nor can you blame it on a faulty schoolhouse. Come on. They took prayer out of school. They didn't take it out of the house, did they? You still got prayer in the house, right? Amen. Come on, Father. You cannot blame it on the greenhouse, the white house, or the schoolhouse. Right, right. Hallelujah. Amen. Peter, Paul, and Mary sung a song back in the 60s. Mm -hmm. The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. You better hear me today. The answer, my friend, is simply the blame falls square on the church house. Mm -hmm. But you have heard, judgment must first begin at the house of God. Mm -hmm. Am I right about it this morning? Amen. 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 Disciples of Christ Jesus. God has set before us life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life that you may live. God has set before you and I an open door and a shut door. Don't ignore the warnings because you're chasing after your wishes and wants. I don't went over somebody's head. Amen. I wish I could get a better job. You get a better job and stop coming to church? Come on. I want a new car. You get a new car and now you can't pay tithe? Come on. Are you ignoring God's warning signs? Over after you chasing your warnings and wishings? The Spirit of the Lord declares, six prophecy woes to the faithless. You're taking uh, notes. That's the sermon title today. Six prophecy woes to the faithless. Now, I'm going to have to explain this because when you hear faithless, come on, let's be honest. Most of y'all think non-Christian, yes or no? Amen. The faithless. I beg to differ. Can I prove it to you? Because. Come with me to Matthew chapter 8. I, I just want to show you this. And then we're going to jump right into this. It's going to be like a preaching, teaching type moment. Come on. But my, my son in the faith, Brother Christopher, got me in a teaching mode this morning. Come on, Bob. I love the young people that's on fire for the Lord. Amen. Do you have Matthew chapter 8? And look Amen. at verse 23. I want you to see this. So you know that it's not me. Will you have it say amen? Amen. amen. Matthew chapter 8, verse 23, the King James Version reads there. Mm -hmm. And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. Who did? His, his disciples. disciples. His disciples. People that want to serve God. People that are serving God. People that have declared him to be Lord of their life. His disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great winter storm. And so much that the ship was covered with uh, pipes, well, waves. But he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and woke him up, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. Verse 26, and he said unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little, little, faith. Faith. little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this? that even the wind and the seas obey him. Mm. Please hear me, men and women of God. The Bible says wisdom is the principal thing, yes or no? Amen. Amen. But he says, but with all thy getting, get understanding. Get understanding. When God speaks about faithless, he is not addressing the sinner, but the saved. For we have been instructed to walk by faith, faith and, not by, and faith. not by sight. He never instructed the sinner to walk by faith. So why would he call them faithless? Mm. When he told us, faith come by hearing yeah. and hearing by the word of God. When he told us, for it is impossible to please God without oh, faith. faith. And they must believe that he is a rewarder of them that what? Diligently seek him. I say that in Sabbath school. Are you diligently washing, uh, watering your lawn? Or you just water it once a year? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Faith come not by what you heard, but by what you are hearing. It don't matter who you hear from. You can hear from your own lips. I'm the head and not the tail. 
My children are going to graduate early. Amen. You can hear from your own lips. Am I right about it this morning? Amen. Please hear what I'm telling you. He just called the disciples, oh ye of little faith. Amen. Which means what? Why are you faithless? Hallelujah. Didn't I tell you to get to the other side? Come on. Didn't I tell you you'll be blessed going out and blessed coming in? Didn't I tell you I sent my word to heal? Didn't Peter say, by his stripes you were word. healed? You're not trying to get healed? You already healed? Didn't the Bible say in Acts 16, 31, if you be saved, yeah. your whole family will be saved? On, You're not trying to get your family saved. You already saved. Then we read where the man said, give me patience and I'll pay off the debt. Didn't he try to do it in his own might? Yes, he did. And God said, wait a minute. You ain't even got to do it. I took care of it for you. Come on, look at somebody and say, God's going to take care of this for me. I mean, believe that this morning. God's going to take care of this for you this morning. So we have been instructed to walk by faith and not by sight. Not the non-believer. As we consider the temperature of these trying times that we find ourselves living in. How many can declare things have gotten hotter and worse? Mm -hmm. My God, my God. Imagine. Right before our eyes, things have gotten hotter and worse mm -hmm. for the planet and even for the people dwelling on the, this planet. It is in times like these, we need to be more sensitive to the spirit of prophecy. Am I right about it? Yeah. I've come to preach to folks this morning who's ready to stir up their faith build up their faith and walk in a new level of faith. Amen. Come on, if that's you that said, I'm walking in a new level I'm of faith. I'm walking in a new level of faith. The Spirit of the Lord declares six prophecy woes to the faithless. This ain't for uh, the sinner. This is for you to know where you are at. Hallelujah. To understand that you learn how to pray Yes, Lord. this thing off of you. Yes or no? Yes, Father. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says when you pray, believe it and not doubt it, you should have it. Hallelujah. God will give us some warning signs. God will send woes. I say six woes. Where is woes? Woes is a terminology that you use for what? Horses. That you use for animals. Whoa there, tiger. Whoa, giddy up there, Joe. Hallelujah. Whoa means to stop. Going forward, yes or no? Amen. It means to stop what you're doing and turn around. I've come to tell somebody, God is trying to show you, turn around. Stop what you're doing. It's not working. Hallelujah. It's not working. In Isaiah chapter 5, look at verse 8. We find the first warning. We pick it up. Woe unto them that join house to house, that lay field to field, till there be no place that they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. And my ears said the Lord of hosts of a truth. Many houses shall be desolate. What? Uh-uh. They look like they're getting blessed. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. But he said, I tell you the truth, their house is desolate. Mm, okay. Watch this. Verse 10. Yea, ten acres of a vineyard shall yield one bath. Ten acres? I only got this one? And, and the seed of a homer should yield one ephah. In other words, you better hear me this morning. God is saying, whoa, warning. Whoa, turn this thing around. You can't see your giving isn't working. You can't see that you are operating in greed and not need. Mm. Who had warned this generation? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To forsake their ways. Mm. What am I talking about greed over need? We are living in a generation where people want to reap without sowing. Come on. They always got their hands out. Bless me. Pay my car note. Pay my house note. Why didn't you buy me something? Why didn't you bless me? But they're not sowing into nobody else's life. Mm -hmm. 
Come on. You better hear what, what I, uh, 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 Isaiah 5, 8 said. Woe unto them that join house to house. You bless me, I'm going to bless you. I don't want to hang with nobody that can't bless me. I can't, I'm tired of blessing other people. I want somebody to bless me. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They want greed over need. They want reaping without sowing. You want to be deserving, but not desiring. You ever heard somebody say, well, I deserve this. Hmm. What you deserve is a hell full of fire. Come on. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Amen. We read that in Sabbath school. We owed an insurmountable debt that we couldn't pay. Amen. We couldn't pay for our sin. Please watch this. I need you to get this. We see that in verses 8 through 10, God gives the first woe. There's six woes. I believe we're in. We've seen all six woes. In our lifetime, who is reading the writing on the wall? The first woe was beware of people that have greed over need who wants reaping without sowing, who wants des uh, desires without deserving it. God don't give me the desires of my heart. You're going to say that arrogant? arrogant? Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You have twisted faith to be more about the possessions of God than the presence of God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got people that have equated, look at my new car, that must mean I'm right with God. Hallelujah. You know, God said I reign on the just and the unjust, right? Amen. You can't tell if somebody's with God because they shout hallelujah. Amen. You can't tell if somebody is right with God because they show up to church. You park your car in a garage. Hallelujah. It don't make your car a garage. Please hear what I'm trying to tell you. They have twisted faith and made faith more about hype than holiness. They've made faith about what? The possessions of God more than the presence of God. We've declined from serving the master while we have increased serving the materialism. The more I get blessed, the more you're going to know I'm with God. You know I'm with God when I got a 30,000 member church. Mm -hmm. You know I'm with God. But when I can go open a, a hospital in this country and that country. Hallelujah. Has anybody noticed how high health care is? Brother, you couldn't open a hospital here? Come on. Hallelujah. Ethiopia is right down the street. Yes or no? Amen. That's hurting people right down the street. Yes. But we have what promoted hype over holiness. Right. We wanted to see the master's degree over people serving the master. Mm. Can I make this thing plain? Woe right. unto them that have houses to houses, that have joined land to land, and have made sure there's no place. I can't even get to see how your lifestyle is? Why are you saying you're blessed and you're not showing me your struggles? The greatest example Jesus ever gave us. I know he did miracles. You understand uh, the greatest he gave us, the greatest example he gave us was Down Thomas. I'm calling him Down Thomas so you can recognize who I'm talking about. Thomas was not doubting. He was just discouraged. Any one of us can be a place in a place of discouragement. Here's what Thomas told the world. If he is who he really say he is, hmm. I should be able to touch him. Because originally God's design, he said, I created a garden and put man in the midst of it. And I put the tree of life in the midst of it. But when they messed up, I told him, get out. Put your clothes on and get out. And you can no longer touch the tree of life. And Thomas said, if he is the tree of life, I should be able to touch him hmm. again. Mm -hmm. Notice when Mary met him in the morning. 
He told Mary, touch me now. I have not ascended to my father. So he can release this commandment. What, when, when was that commandment given, brothers and sisters? The Bible said he put two angels around the tree of life that no man can touch it. How many know that's why he put us out the garden? Because he said if man in this sin condition will eat of the tree of life, he will live forever. Sin will live forever. He said, therefore, I have to put man out that they don't eat. Thomas said, guess what? If you're really the tree of life, let me touch you. And what did God tell Thomas? Touch me. Touch me. Let me tell you what, what Thomas was saying. Thomas was saying, if you're really who you are, show me your wounds. Show me how you made it through your kids running away, saying, I hate you, mama, and you still didn't lose your mind. Show me how you were stuck on drugs and God delivered you. I want to see your wounds. Don't be ashamed of your wounds. Show me how you got victory over the cross. Show me how you got victory over your past. And I'll follow you all the days of... We got preachers that just say God will bless you and won't show you that my child was murdered. Yeah. Amen. Dr. Frederick Casey Price went home to be with, with the Lord. Very young in his ministry. Right after he got saved. Right after he said, I'm going to trust you, God. Guess what happened? A drunk driver murdered his eight-year-old son. Mm. And he heard the Lord say, if this ever gonna work, it need to work for you now. Come on. Show me your pain Come on, of when, what you've been through, and I'll serve you all the days of my life. But many of us want a high. You know I'm struggling. You know I'm having it hard. You don't understand. I had some mess ups. I had some failures. But through it all, God is still in control. Yes, He is. Through it all, He says, "Let me tell y'all the first woe." Don't let greed supersede your need. Hallelujah. God did not die to meet your greed. He died to meet your need. Hallelujah. God says don't twist scripture. How many know the King David twisted scripture? How many know he was an adulterer? Right. And how many know he was a murderer? Amen. He put the wife of the woman he cheated with on the, he put her husband on the front line so he will be what? Yeah. Murdered. So he can then look innocent when she say, oh, y'all, I'm pregnant, everybody. Well, yeah. She can go live with him now, the husband David. David thought in his mind, if I don't kill this man and she pregnant, the husband say, wait, I ain't been with you in two years. Son. How you get pregnant and I ain't been home? Hmm. They're going to find out she had a baby outside of wedlock. Come on. And she might tell somebody, the king had he thought in his mind, do I want to be known as a murderer? Mm. Hallelujah. On adulterer. He said, kill him. David had rather been have known as a murderer than an adulterer. But how many know God has a way of showing you up? Come on. Yeah. A prophet came to David. I'm talking about six prophecy woes. Come on, come on. A prophet came to David and said, whoa! Slow your roll, king. Whoa up, king. You know you did what you did and think nobody know. But God knows. Come on, Come on look at somebody and say, God knows. God knows. What's really in your heart. What's, what's really, really in your heart. heart. God knows. Yes, he knows. That you want to link up house to house. God knows you only went into politics so you could become rich. God knows you only wanted to be in church so you don't have to go out and work in the secular world. You don't care about souls. Hallelujah. We forgot that it, it's about the chosen of God. You got to be chosen to do uh, God's business, yes or no? Amen. Many are called. Few are chosen. Oh, I can do it with Bishop T.D. I can do it with Rod Parsley. I can do Are you chosen? Watch this. He says, we have declined from serving the master, but we have increased serving materialism. Hallelujah. Man, you can't get preachers, saints, to wear button-up sleeves anymore. They got to have their couplings. They got to look like they dress well. And, ooh, yeah, you can tell he a preacher. Yeah. 
I read where John came neither eating nor drinking. Come on. Where he came in camel skin. Hallelujah. I read where Paul said, it is not by excellent in speech, but it's by power and in demonstration of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. But we have settled for hype over holiness. Mm. Hallelujah. How you got a Bible Belt Church state like Texas? A few years ago, they voted in a lesbian mayor. Come on. But we all love you, God. Now, some of y'all are going to get offended by this teaching, but I'm telling you, we're in the warning signs right now. We're in the prophetic warning signs. And God sent me to tell you, don't you forget the prophecy. I've set an open door before. Yeah, 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 yeah. The problem is, for an open door, that must mean what? I'm leaving out where I've been to go where I've never been before. But where I've never been before can be scary, yes or no. Amen. Hallelujah. How many know... Uh, when we read Matthew where he says, uh, get into the ship, go to the other side. How many know the disciples have never been on the other side? Right. While they're trying to get to the other side of their prophecy, a storm came up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And they were faithless. I'm talking about six prophecy woes to the faithless, to the child of God that you don't understand. You in your prophecy right now. And you need to declare, let every man be a liar, but let God be true. I see the warning sign. I see the woes. How many know woes mean warning? Yes. And so, watch this. He says, yea, ten acres of vineyard should yield one bath, and the seed of a homer should yield an epoch. Hallelujah. How is it we got so many Christians and all their children or having children outside of wedlock. Like sinning left and right. Amen. And we okay with that. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. We can't even break this generational curse. No. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can look back over our life and say, wait a minute, I got married with, with, with a baby outside of my life before. Now this is falling on my child. Look what he said. You got an acre of vineyard. Wow. This is available to you. But it's not, a, it's not producing the maximum amount that God wants to bless you with. Somehow you have been comfortable with a, a puddle of blessings and not flowing in an ocean of blessings. Hallelujah. Didn't God tell us that I will bleed you into a land flowing with milk and, milk honey. and honey? Well, we tell America... If you're African-American, what do you tell America? Where are my 40 acres and a mule? When are you going to tell God, where is my land of milk and honey? Yeah. How is it that my child stuck on drugs? How is it my child dropped out of school? How is it, God, you gave me this child. You told me this child is anointed from the womb to the tomb. What is going on? Yeah. First of all. You got our focus and you put it on greed as opposed to need. Why you think so many people get into politics? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Surely President Obama going to fix this thing in America now. Yeah. Surely it's going to get better. Nobody was looking at it to get worse. Uh -huh. How many of y'all even thought it could have got worse? Yeah. Hallelujah. Now we're using a slang like Patreon. And we forget that there was an African American with George Washington that, that crossed over in, at Valley Forge. Anybody remember that? Oh, we didn't learn that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What, you don't call that person a patriot? Hmm. What about the brother that, that did the first open heart surgery? You don't call him a patriot? Right. Am I talking to anybody this morning? Amen. We got hype, but no holiness. We have feel good conversation with no conviction. Hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. We talk about, oh yeah, I know how to do this and that, but nobody's doing it. Hmm. Well, all they need to do is pray. Why don't you lead prayer then? 
Hallelujah. Look at the second woe. That's found in verse 11, brothers and sisters. Look at it. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning. Well, I thought the early bird catches the worm. What, could that be bad? Did you read the rest of it? You rise up early that they may follow what? Strong, Strong drink. drink. Uh, that continue until night to wine inflame them. And the harp and the vial and the tabaret and the pipe and the wine are in their feast, but they what? They regard not the Lord. They don't regard his work. Neither consider the operation of his hand. Did anybody see the operation of God in this past week? How prophetic it was that God spoke of candlelight and then some of us needed candles. I didn't see it. You better hear me today. What's the first wall? You got greed over need. You got twisted scripture. You don't see your life is full of twisted scripture to make it sound right why you broke, busted, and disgusted. You're going to twist scripture to make it sound right why your children are having children outside of wedlock. You're going to make it sound right that your kids are in captivity in opposition of Acts 16.31, the first woe. Oh, some of y'all going to get upset because I'm delivering mail on your street. Yeah. Mm. The second woe is false shouts with no substance. They wake up early and they follow strong drink. You better hear me this morning. They wake up early means they have false shouts with no substance. What does strong drink do for you? It gives you an imitation high. That's what strong drink does. How many know the prophet Isaiah called him the God of the most high? You can't get no higher than serving God. But they're going for an imitation high. This is the second world. When you begin to see the body of Christ, when you begin to see the church house yeah. operating in false high. Come on. You know God ain't no way in your circumstance. Mm -hmm. Ouch. How long have we been putting up Come with an imitation high? But it's not from God. How many know Paul said, be not drunk with wine, but be drunk in the Holy Ghost. Now you got people faking the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. You got people saying, come to my school and I'll train you how to speak in tongues. Hallelujah. You got some people saying healing is not for today. You better hear me today. If healing is not for today, then why are you serving God? Come on. Are you telling me if I do what Paul do, did? If you're telling me if I do what Moses did, I can't have what Moses had? Hmm. But you told me that you're an impartial God. God is no respecter of person. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're telling me if I did what Timothy did, I can't have what Timothy got? Hallelujah. Amen. Am I talking to anybody that you believe your parents was had favoritism with one child over the other? Amen. You never grew up like that? Amen. Oh, my brother could break a bottle, nothing happened. I break a bottle, I'm punished the whole summer. Come on. Mama, that's not fair. How how you can eat sweets, but I can't have sweets. Come on. Mama, that's not fair. Amen. Why would you serve a God that's unfair? Why would God say these people can have this power, but you can't have this power? Mm. Wait a minute. Don't that sound like America? Mm. They can have the American dream, but you can't have the American dream. Come on, Pop. They convinced you. Let, let me tell you what America did. They convinced some of its citizens. Child, you can't do, do no better than me. You better take this black eye and glad you got me. Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. Is that not what America told some of its citizens? Mm -hmm. This is better than, than anywhere else you can have. You mean a, a, a husband's never told his abused wife that? Mm -hmm. God, I'm the best man you can ever get. Mm -hmm. It's your me. It's your me. You got a cheating husband, and all you hear is God said, don't leave him? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. 
Am I talking to anybody this morning? And God says, whoa, second warning. You have false, you have false shouts with no substance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What am I talking about? He says, and your discernment level of worship is off. You think because somebody said Jesus, you think they saved. Mm. You think because somebody's having a conversation about Jesus, they saved. You think because somebody go to church, they saved. Church don't make you a Christian. Come on. Because you're a church, because you're a Christian, you go to church. Yeah. Religion ain't never saved nobody. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. You have conversation with no conviction. Hallelujah. You have an outward appearance of holiness. Come on, look at them getting drunk to their inflamed. Don't you remember Hannah? Hannah prayed. Tell me what the what what the preacher first thought. <coughs> Anybody know the story? <coughs> she didn't have a baby. The other wife had a baby, Panuna. She had a baby. She went to the house of God and started praying in tongues. Guess what the preacher said? She drunk. Mm. Amen. She got a foul spirit. Hannah said, no, man of God, I'm not drunk. Tell her, I'm trying to get God to answer a prayer. Am I talking to anybody? Amen. Were you trying to get God to answer a prayer this morning? Uh -huh. Hallelujah. God said, I'm going to send you a woe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Stop putting your trust in people that looked apart. And you'll walk over me because I don't look the part. Hallelujah. How many people walk over uh, Dr. King and just call him a civil rights leader but won't call him a modern day prophet? Amen. Hallelujah. Am I talking to anybody? We got to get this thing right today. God has sent us woes, six of them. Six prophetic woes from the prophet Isaiah saying, this is what's going on in your life. The enemy has come in and turned your need into greed. Hmm. This is what's going on. You settle for anybody that can shout right. Even though you see their living is wrong. Didn't the Bible say if a man don't know how to take care of the house of God, uh, uh, of his own house, he, take, he can't take care of the house of God? Amen. That don't make, you don't even put value on that anymore. Hmm. Hallelujah. Outward appearance of holiness, but their actions are unholy, where they're inflamed. And can I tell you again, may I remind you that this is being done by people in the church? Hallelujah. Amen. Why is this happening? Why are we allowing this to happen? Look at verse 13. This is why. The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity uh, because they have no knowledge. This is the cancer in the body of Christ. You have gone into captivity not because you're outright sinning, but by lack of knowledge. Not knowing means unaware of God's movements in the earth. You don't know what God is doing in this situation. Right. And you're walking in a lack of knowledge. Amen. Men and women of God, can I ask you all a question? For those that are old enough, uh, can you remember how the church was back in the 60s, uh, the 70s, the 80s? How far has the church gotten off tonight? <laughs> I only go to church if they have something for the kids. Don't you know, back in the 60s, they didn't have none for the kids? Hallelujah. The church never had a playground or a slide in the back. They had graveyards in the back. Amen. Yes or no? The church had uh, the Robinson family on this pew. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bruce Hall family on this pew. Now, why your child, oh, they didn't want to get up this morning. What? Mm. And you don't see that's a war? Mm -hmm. You don't see? God said you chose hype 
over holiness. You know how many people tell me, oh, I go to that church because I love the praise. But you want to come to me for gifts. Can you interpret this dream? Can you give me a prophetic word? Why are you going to that church then? Ouch! Listen to me. Not knowing, unaware of God's movement in the earth. Look what else he says in verse 13. And your honorable men are famished. Hmm. Listen, God got a whole bunch of people that's walking upright. But you won't come sit under them because you think what? They're too strict. So your honorable men is famine. I'm not going to, you're not going to force me to preach what you want to hear. Come on. You better not preach on this. You better not preach. You know, you know they legalize drugs. I don't care what man legalized. If God said it's illegal, guess what? It's illegal. It's still illegal. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says if you want to be forgiven, you got to repent. You got people trying to bring people to Christ without even using the word repent. Tell God you made a mistake. Mm. How many know a mistake won't send you to hell? <laughs> if, I, if, if I knock this glass over, is that going to send me to hell? No. That's a mistake. If I burn the beans, is that going to send me to hell? No. Mistakes don't send you to hell. Sin send you to hell. Amen. Woe to them. The honorable men are famished. What? They're dried up. No. Means you wore us down. I got to prop you up. I got to tickle your flesh. Oh, I better not say that. Ooh, I hope this is an uplifting message. Guess what? Get right or get left. That should be an uplifting message. Amen. Guess what? Hell is real and heaven's real. Amen. Mm -hmm. Repent so you may live with Jesus. How about that being an uplifting message? Hallelujah. I didn't like how you said my child wasn't going to get, your child ain't going to get right until you what? Stop sparing the rock. Hmm. Hallelujah. Come on, man of God. I'm surprised you got some parent, they think because their kid is grown, they can't talk to their kid. That's not the parent I got. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You better hear me today. You still a parent. I don't care how old they are. They're living under your roof. If they're not living underneath your roof. Child, I'm your mama. You better answer me. Come on. You calling. They won't even answer my phone call. Lord, I give them over to you. I'm done with it. Do you have that boldness? Do you have that level of faith? For without faith, it is impossible to please God. Yes, Lord. Why don't you give them to God? That's what the father did with the prodigal son. Amen. Nowhere in the scripture do you see where he followed his son into the far country. He said, son, the best thing I can do for you is keep praying for you. But you can't live under my roof with this bad attitude. Okay. Uh, I'd rather you under my roof doing drugs. You can't do drugs in my house, in my car. I'm not going to get you. You're living out of sin. Keep that stuff in the street. Whoa! Amen. Hallelujah. You wore them down, the honorable men. You dried them up. Scared to preach. They don't have a need of honorable men anymore. I need educated men behind the, the, the pulpit. Therefore, hunger has increased, but nobody's satisfied. Thirst has increased, but they're not satisfied. Am I right about it this morning? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Has increased. Why? Has it increased? Because the truth be told, we can't find holiness or sanctification in the house of God anymore. Mm -hmm. We've seen priests, pedophiles, Mess with boys, yes or no? Amen. We've seen Baptist preachers mess with girls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've seen Pentecostal preachers mess with boys and girls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can we bring integrity back to the pulpit? Come on. Come on, Bob. Or do you want us to dance around it? Can we preach sanctification 
and let that be okay, please? Can we preach holiness? Can I let you look at my lifestyle? Can I let you come to my house and examine my living? Come on. Hallelujah. Or are we all trying to be carbon copies of each other? Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. There's no more sanctification in the house of God. The shouts are there, but there's no substance, brothers and sisters. And God said, this is woe number two. The attendance is there, but there's no anointing there. Hallelujah. Amen. Cookie copy preachers have replaced chosen preachers. Cookie copy the preachers. We got people that's trying to teach the Bible and their house is tore up from the floor. Come on. Hallelujah. Right. We got sisters trying to teach. I'm the speaker of the hour. And you're dealing with your husband cheating on you. Hmm. And you won't be transparent and say, Saints, I need y'all to pray for me. Corinthians chapter, 1 Corinthians 1, 6 says what? Uh... If you're going to let anybody judge you, let the least in the church judge you. Hmm. Hallelujah. Some of you may have remembered. I got. I put a chair in the middle of the floor. I asked some of the saints, come on, lay hands on me. Pray for me. Yeah. My prayer every Friday. If you remember what I say, God, I pray for a teachable spirit, a humble spirit. Yes, Lord. Who can lead so great a people as God unless God be with them? I'm not trying to lead you by my intellect. I'm scared as all outdoors. Your soul is important to me. Yes. Your children's soul is important to me. I'm not trying to tickle your flesh. I'm trying to get you in heaven. Amen. I'm trying to get your grandchildren in heaven. This ain't no game to me. I'm not trying to build up numbers. Hallelujah. I'm trying to get you to memorize numbers. 2319. God is a man that he should not lie. Nor the son of man that he should repent. If he spoke it, should he not bring it to pass? If he not said it, should he not make it good? What he doing for you? If I God said if you be saved, your whole household should be Lord saved. Is. But you got to let him save it the way he got to save it. I not the way you God. want him to save it. Come on. I want him to save my husband, but but let my husband uh, like my potato salad. Mm -hmm. Child, he'll never get potato salad as long as the sun shines for up. this, brother. Yeah. Come on, Pop. You got to give your children to God. You got to give your marriage to God. Amen. Woe to them. Yes. Watch this. We have cookie cop copy preachers over chosen preachers. Y'all yes. done bore us out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A man of God, you just another man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've never heard me use the N-word, right? Mm -hmm. Some of y'all go home and use the N-word like, like you saying past coffee. Mm -hmm. How many know that N-word is a belittling word that should never be used? The Bible said, for every idle word you use, it should be held accountable. I'm not using no idle word. Hallelujah. When you hear me talk, I said, so your daughter had gone home to glory. Yes or no? Amen. I say, my mother went home to You never hear me say, they died. The Bible says, why are you seeking the living among the dead? You never hear me say, they died. You heard me say, uh, Dr. Apostle Frederick C. K.C. Price went on to be with the Lord. Ain't nobody died here. I believe they're living. Because the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Am I right about it? Are you going to believe God? Or are you perishing for a lack of knowledge that you don't know how to go line upon line and precept upon precept? You want to keep walking in ignorance? You want to keep walking in? I got blind faith. No, sir, I don't want blind faith. I want powerful faith. Yes, Father. I want faith that moves mountains. Is anybody with me this Amen. Amen. Six Amen. prophecy woes. To the faithless. Child, ain't nothing about me Amen. faithless. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of us speak in God's opposition all the time? Mm. Well, I'm waiting to get healed. You already healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are y'all getting this? Amen. 
Look at verse 14. Therefore hell has enlarged herself. So hell was just for the devil and his angels. But we have enlarged hell. Did you hear me? We, the backslider. We, the lost. We. Who sung this? Marvin Gaye? Oh, mother, mother, mother. That was Marvin. Yeah. What's going on? What's going on? Nobody's asking God what is yeah. going on. How America get the first black president and then the very next president? Mm. What the <laughs> is going on? <laughs> yes or no? Amen. You know how many people believe that the COVID is a hoax? I talked somebody talked to somebody the other day. Say I don't believe that's real. Mm. Wow. Wow. Mm. My people perish for lack of knowledge. I don't want to take that vaccine. They got the chip in it. <laughs> oh, no, I don't want to take that vaccine. But you're taking a blue shot. Come on. Right. I'm trying to tell you, have you been paying attention to the wolves? Whoa, get, whoa there, horsey. Little horsey, horsey. Hold on. I pray y'all getting blessed by this. Hallelujah. Hell is increasing while the church is decreasing, men and women of God. Our children are being sold into secularism, but identifying it as spiritualism. Mm. We must pay attention to the six prophecy woes to the faithless. There is still time to walk into an open door, men and women of God. There is still time to choose life over death, holiness over hype. The time is now. The time is now. The warnings are coming fast and furious and also fatal. But God is still in control. Yes, yes. But your faith can throw the winning blow. I said your faith can throw the winning blow. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Hallelujah. Look at verse 18. I got to hurry. Woe unto them that draw inequity with cords of vanity and sin as it were a cart rope. That say, let him make speed and hasten his work that we may see it. And let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw nigh and come that we may know it. The church is tore up from the flow up. This is the third woe. What is it? Woe. Look at it that draw inequity with cord and vanity uh, and sin as it were a cart rope that say let him make speed and hasten his work. This, this is the third woe, which means bringing God down to man's level. Hallelujah. What is bringing God down to man's level? You have to go to Romans chapter 1, verse 23. And they brought God down and made him as a four-footed beast. God is whatever he, we say he is. You got homosexuals saying, God love me. Yes, he love you and he wants you to change. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got people believe they were born that way. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. How many know a, a, a baby born with no eyes is a deformity? Amen. If you born with a hole in your heart, don't they call that a deformity? Amen. Yeah. God created man to fall in love with a woman. Mm How -hmm. I many know if you fall in love with a man, that's called a deformity? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't praise you for thinking, stinking. I cannot. Mm -hmm. Watch this, men and women of God. People will begin to parade their sins in front of God. And they're going to put a rope on a cord and pull it in front of God. And say, we're going to force you to accept. Drugs is okay now. I can come to church high on marijuana. Mm. Hallelujah. I can be a preacher and carry my gun in the pulpit. Because mm. you know they got some crazy people coming. Oh, you mean like when they got John the Baptist? You mean like when they took Jesus and brought him to Calvary? Mm. They've been attacking preachers. Mm. You mean like they put Dr. Martin Luther King in jail? Didn't he show us nonviolent? 
All of a sudden, you better than Dr. Martin Luther King, and you got to carry a gun now? Preacher, I'm not talking to the pew. I'm talking to the preacher. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. They parade their sin in front of God with no fear of any consequences. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, and put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. This is the fourth woe, the prophetic woe. Now they want to change God's word to fit their condition. Hallelujah. To fit their sinful lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to convince you I'm pro-life, but I'm not pro-abstinence. They better take birth control pill. No, ma'am. God said. Well, you know, they're going to do what they do. There's a fallen world out there. But I thought when you pray, prayer is supposed to change things. Hallelujah. Amen. Watch this. You have people save a baby. But you're committing fornication in the church. You got preachers saying God loves us all. But you better not marry my white daughter. Yeah. Ouch! Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got people leaving church because you got preachers preaching political now. Not gospel, political. Instead of saying, let me give you the gospel. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. That means you're twisting scripture. You twisting God's word to fit what you want to call good now. God won't do that. God, you got you didn't come in love. You know I don't have to come at all, right? Amen. We all adults, right? Right. All of a sudden now I got issues with how you come to me. Okay. I guarantee you, if you drowning, you don't care how I swim out to you. Right. As long as you come get me. Yeah. I've come to tell somebody, I've come to get you this morning. Man. To tell you, have you been paying attention to the six woes that God has been parading through this generation? Yeah. That says, look at when it started. Hallelujah. So now they changed the word of God to fit a sinful lifestyle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and they're committing fornication in all levels of sexual immoralities. You want to preach birth control pills. Hallelujah. Instead of abstinence. You're talking about God's anointed. And you don't, you don't even care that you're talking about a servant of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says, touch not my anointed, do my prophets no harm. You don't care about talking about no anointed person of God. And you think God's blessing that? Woe to them that call evil good and good evil. That put light for darkness, sweet for bitter and bitter for sweet. Look at the fifth woe, verse 21. I'm getting there. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. The fifth woe. Now notice I say fifth woe and not fifth woe for those in Houston, Texas. Fifth ward, not fifth ward. Mm -hmm. See, that's why I don't go to the fifth ward. No, I didn't say fifth ward. Fifth ward. The church will begin to lift up worldly people over anointed people. We'll begin to put political figures over chosen figures. We'll, be, we'll begin to twist scriptures and say, well, uh, the economy's getting better. Oh, is that why everybody need to go get uh, unemployment when the pandemic hit because we had all that money saved up in the bank. Hallelujah. Look what happened with this winter stone. Hallelujah. How many people was caught off guard? When are you going to wake up and see the writing on the wall that God says, I would not have you ignorant. My people are, are perishing for a lack of knowledge. Is there anybody came today for knowledge today and say, God, I see. I can see clearly now. This ain't the devil. You told us that you can tell when you are, when you begin to be faithless, when you start greed over need. 
when you start twisting scripture, when you start trying to uh, put God below your level. Hallelujah. And when you begin to lift up worldly people over God's anointed people, we want people with degrees more than people with discipline. Hallelujah. We know how to grow a church through marketing, but we don't know how to mark them that may be ashamed. Oh, we know how to make a church grow through marketing, right? Let's offer golf tournament. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's get in some known pre uh, singers. We're not a market growth, but we don't know how to mark people that sin it so they can be ashamed and repent. We have replaced repentance with recycle. I'm going to leave this church because you told me to repent and go to the church down the street. They won't make me repent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they've replaced the cross with crossover, do-overs, until man has decided it's over. So now you put your trust in man when man said, we're going to excommunicate you. Hallelujah. We're going to get, we're going to do crossovers and do-overs until man. How about it's not over till God says it's over? How about that today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't intimidate me. I can read the warning signs. I can see God is coming back. Am I talking to anybody this morning? Man. That this got to be more than just church attending. Mm -hmm. yes. This got to be about a relationship and not a religion. Yes. This has to be about God getting me right. right for How I can't see all that you've yeah. done for me, all that you protected me with. Yeah. Pause it, brother. Hallelujah. I'm not going to rush. Six prophecy rules. Verse 22. The sixth war. War unto them that are mighty to drink wine, and men of, of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward, and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. What is the sixth the sixth war? We saw it. We see it. The sixth war, the sixth prophetic warning. God said, Beware of money and influence is more powerful than God. People of high intellect that have drunk from the cup of power and fame will now promote the ungodly to destroy the godly. Didn't we see that? We don't care about his character. Look at what he's done for the economy. We don't care that he said he touched women like this. We don't even care that they got women saying he did this. We don't. No, no, it's wrong for some people, but not for this person. Wow. Let, let me read it to you again. Woe to them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength mm. to mingle strong drink that have influence over your decision. You've joined a cult. You've joined, you become a puppet and you don't even know it. You still believe, hallelujah, Christopher Columbus discovered America, uh -huh. don't you? How can you discover something where people are already living? Come on, God. This whole thing got to change, hallelujah. Yeah. You still uh -huh. believe that you can cheat on your wife and still be called a Christian. That got to change. Mm -hmm. hallelujah. hallelujah. You got to give your, your children tough love. You got to give them, thus said the Lord, mm -hmm. not thus said mama. Well, I don't know how to explain it. You better get to a church where they can teach you how to explain to your child why you shouldn't be doing this. Because God is the ultimate authority. Mm -hmm. Amen. This is not based on what mama believed. This is based on what mama learned about God's word. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything about mama and daddy is based on God's principle. Yes. And not on mama or dad's panic. Hallelujah. Child, I gave you to God when you I, I gave you to God when you came out the womb. Mm -hmm. See, this child here been covered in the blood. Hallelujah. But you forgot that, didn't you? You forgot how you used to hold your little baby and say, God, please watch over this child. Don't you remember praying that? Anybody remember the, the movie Roots when he picked up that baby and held him up to the sky? 
And he spoke over that baby and said, Behold, the only thing greater than yourself is the God of all the heaven. I've come to tell you to tell your children today, I don't care how old you get, behold, the only thing greater than you'll ever be is the true and living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It is him him alone that's sending you these Glory. Don't you ever put man's money over God. Don't you ever put your degree over what God is doing in your life. Don't you ever think mama dumb because she don't know how to work a mouse. Baby, mama put a roof over your head. Am I right about it this morning? Amen. Mama knew how to take care of you without even a doctor's degree. Yeah. All of a sudden, uh, you think you're smarter than your parents because you know technology? Come on, man. How many people lost without technology? How many years ago we knew that you can burn water and get all of it out? Well. Before they started selling bottled water. How many of us grew up where you used to drink out the faucet in the backyard? Come on, faucet. Yeah. All of a sudden, that's dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. Drink out the creek. <laughs> Amen. I'm trying to talk to somebody. Yeah. We have brought God down uh -huh. and have not paid attention to the sixth prophecy of woe. And the prophet Isaiah said there's six warnings God's going to give. Not for the world, but to the believer. To them that can say, I need to change my life. Somebody say, well, how do I change? Check, see which woe you on. Yeah. Mm. Check what woe you on. Mm. You might say, well, he good for the economy. Is he really? No. Well, we saw one brother said, I can't breathe. Is that good for the economy? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Come on, yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, you saw these people broke into this man's house and killed this girl while she's sleeping. And no charges filed? Is that the economy you want? So I tell you today, is that the God you want to serve? A God of partiality? God says, I don't judge by what I see. I judge by what's coming out of your mouth. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God said, I sent you signs and warnings, brothers and sisters. God said, I would not have you ignorant. My people go into captivity. Come on, would you stand to your feet man, with me this morning? Can you declare, God, I've been in captivity. I put pro-life over abstinence. I put this over that. I put, I'd rather my child be under my roof doing stuff than out in the street. Mm. You need to become the police to your child. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We got parents trying to be their best friend. Wow. Glory to God. I got to close. Please hear me, men and women of God. How do you stay in firm and strong? How do you do that? How do you stand firm and strong, men and women of God? In the midst of chaos, in the midst of these warnings, you got to take heed to these six prophecy warnings. These six woes that God said, wait a minute, you better stop. You're heading in the wrong direction. Whoa! Whoa! God says, listen to my warning sign. And then come out from among them and touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you, saith the Lord. The prophecies of God are a sure foundation. Am I right about it? If God said it, it shall come to pass. Amen. It will if you only trust him. I said it will if you only trust him. We got to raise our level of faith, brothers and sisters. Yes, Lord. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Uh, 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 Philippians 4, 8 says what? If you think on anything, think on things that are pure and just and holy and of praise. If there be any virtue, if there be any of these things, think on these things. That if God be for me, who can be against me? I see the warning signs, God. You told me to get right before I get left. You sent signs to say, I told you to stop. I said before you open doors and shut doors. Is, is God speaking to anybody this morning that said, I almost went through this closed door. I wanted it my way, but not my way. Your way, God. God says today, 
Today, God wants to reveal his prophecy through your increased faith. Increased faith will increase prophecy. And increased prophecy will increase your knowledge. And increased knowledge will bring you out of captivity. Hallelujah. I said increased knowledge will bring you out of captivity. You mean I ain't got to pray to come out of captivity? I just got to increase knowledge? Faith come by hearing. You, you better start hearing God's word every day. You better hear it from your own lips. I'm delivered. I'm set free. I break the curse of poverty and ignorance. Every head bow. You can uh, take, brother, if we can, and we'll close it out. Say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for walking in ignorance. A lack of knowledge of your, of your commandments, of your statutes. Lord Jesus, I surrender to your truth. I get rid of my answer to stand on your answer. Lord Jesus, that word will I hide in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart. Redeem me. Heal me. Set me free. I need you, God. I started believing lies. I started walking back in darkness. You told me to touch not, taste not, handle not. You said come out from among them and be ye separate. You said have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Lord Jesus, I see the warning signs. I hear the woes. I have allowed the bugler. Uh, to Bible the boundaries of your blessings. Lord Jesus, get me right. I can't get right by myself. I can't be free by myself. Open up your word. Thy servant is ready. Willing and obedient to listen. In Jesus Christ's name. Let everyone in agreement say amen. 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 Come on, give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. We want to thank you for tuning in. We know that the message blessed you as well as stirred up your soul. MOGFC, where we are growing families, not just a church. If you need a healing or prophetic word, or if you know someone that needs prayer, we want to invite you to join us in our time of worship. Our service times are Sabbath school every Saturday morning starting at 9.15 a.m. Sabbath worship is every Saturday morning starting at 10.30 a.m. Our weekly Bible study is every Monday evening starting at 7 p.m. Our weekly prayer service is every Friday evening starting at 7.30 p.m. Our location, 4741 Highway 6 North, Houston, Texas, 77084. Our mailing address, P.O. Box 218-242, Houston, Texas, 77218 or watch us live at www.new.livestream.com slash MOGFC or www.youtube.com slash MOGFC. Our web address www.mogfc.org. Our email address pastor at mogfc.org. We, we would love to see you soon. On behalf of Apostle D and the MOGFC family, be blessed, stay blessed, and be a blessing.